the government and Dominic Cummings are absolutely clear that the guidelines were not broken. Yes, there's that overarching message, but under that message, there are pages and pages of detail and explicit safeguarding measures, particularly for children. I'll note that the week before Dominic Cummings made his trip up to Durham, uh, uh, Dr. Jenny Harries at the press conference on the 24th of March told the nation that yes, there are exemptions with regard to safeguarding children. When that is uh, necessary, that's what must be done because these, these lockdown restrictions aren't there to the exclusion of the welfare of children and they never have been. This lockdown in this country is not the same as the lockdown in Italy or the lockdown in Spain. There are specific uh, provisions there to make sure that people don't go without the care that sometimes they very much need. But Tom, don't you think if you're in a senior position in the government, you're one of those people who are putting together these rules that you're expecting the whole population to abide by, that you need to lead by example on this. And even though you might be able to look further down the footnotes of the guideline to find a way that you can justify what has happened here, there are a lot of people who are deeply unhappy with what has happened here and they feel that it's been a breach of trust and they feel that all their sacrifices have meant nothing. To some extent, I think that there is an argument that we shouldn't expect people in public life to follow the letter of the law. They must go above and beyond that. However, that distinction, I'm not sure, is one that is worth a resignation. Let's be real about this. There are people now calling on the most senior advisor in number 10 to resign over a car trip that was within the letter of the rules. Now, that is an extraordinary position to find ourselves in. It does smack of political opportunism, particularly from the Labour Party, who are now calling for Dominic Cummings to resign. I note that all it's of the not, Labour But it's not just the Labour Party, is it? There's now, the there's now 16... But there's, uh, Tom, there's now 16 Conservative MPs that are calling for him to step down. It's not just the Labour yes, Party. And, of course, of course, Dominic Cumming, if, if, if you took any of those 16 Conservative MPs at any point over the last year, I think they'd find any excuse to say Dominic Cummings should go. These are people with history with Dominic Cummings. But the point that I wanted to make was Keir Starmer specifically said if he was Prime Minister, he would have let Dominic Cummings go. But he didn't let Stephen Kinnock go, the Labour MP, when he travelled hundreds of miles to see his elderly parents. He didn't let the Welsh Health Secretary, a Labour Health Secretary, a Labour politician, go when he went out for a picnic with his family explicitly against the rules. He didn't let the Labour MP Tahir Ali go when Tahir Ali attended a funeral with 100 people. People across this country have been denied going to funerals, denied seeing their loved ones. And that Labour MP went to that funeral with 100 people and Keir Starmer did nothing. The hypocrisy here is outrageous. There's another Labour MP up in Durham who went to a birthday party and there was no big furore. There was no big media outcry. And I think that people will not like this kind of hypocrisy from Keir Starmer and from a lot well, of the media. But when, Labour when Labour politicians explicitly break the rules, that's fine. And then when a government advisor sticks within the letter, if not the spirit of the rules, that's somehow Tom, a disaster. we have to say, we're running a poll this morning breach. on Good Morning Britain and 80% of our viewers think that he should resign, that he should go. And that's over 10,000 people who have voted so far this morning. So I think, you know, that's a significant... I think it's changing at the moment. It might even have gone up to 81 yeah, in the last sure, few 10, minutes. Sure, 10,000 people, I think, I think we'd probably expect that. That's not a representative uh, cross-section of the country. When YouGov did polling on this, it was around half and half. Yeah, country, but still more... Actually, it was expect. more than half, wasn't it, as I think you know. But listen, I've got to go back to Professor Reicha here because you've made an accusation with about him that I think he may have missed because we lost him temporarily. But we should make the point that also two of his colleagues backed him up with uh, what he said. But, uh, uh, Professor Reiser, just to allow you to reply to what Tom said, because he said it was your political activism that was behind your criticism here. All of us became involved in Spy B in the sense as critical friends. But I am not the Conservative, that's perfectly true. But Doris Johnson is the Prime Minister and I want him to do the best possible job in leading us out of this mess because he's the only Prime Minister we've got. And my concern is what if he's done makes him less able, it makes him less influential. My concern is I want him to be a better leader. I want to be a more effective leader. I want him to be able to bring the country together in fighting COVID-19. And quite frankly, the proof of the pudding 
is what's happening this morning. He's divided the country. Yeah. He's lost the population and he's undermined what he should be doing, which is leading us out of this pandemic. OK, let's, let's bring uh, Sonia in. Uh, Sonia, you work at The Observer, of course, and you've been hearing what Tom has to say. Uh, the week before he went, Jenny Harry said there are exemptions for safeguarding children. Boris Johnson has been particularly clear. He felt he behaved responsibly, legally, integrity and acted as any parent would with the instinct of a parent. He wanted to safeguard their child. Well, I think Boris Johnson at that press conference last night insulted the intelligence of a nation. I completely disagree with Tom. I think it's very clear that Dominic Cummings broke guidelines. Those safeguarding uh, provisions were put into the guidelines uh, by the request of domestic abuse charities. And they're there in the case of extreme threats to someone's life or someone's well-being. Jenny Harries was very clear when she spoke in the press conference, the deputy chief medical officer on Friday night, once you get symptoms of coronavirus, you must stay at home unless there is an extreme threat to life. Now, no one has been claiming that there was an extreme threat to Dominic Cummings' little boy's life. And I think the reason why this is so insulting for the country is that there are lots of parents who would have been in exactly the same position, worried about getting sick or sick, worried about their child, and they would have thought, well, the right thing to do is to save lives and protect the NHS by staying at home. So I think it was a real insult uh, to, to the country, and I think that's why we're seeing so much anger that is reflected in some of those polls that you were talking about, the interviews you've done. But just one other thing, I really agree with Stephen Reicher. This going forwards, this isn't about Dominic Cummings anymore. This is about a prime minister who has chosen to save his advisor rather than protect the integrity of the government's public health advice. That does put lies at risk because we are now about to go into a phase where the government is rolling out a track and trace strategy where if you if they think you've come into contact with somebody with coronavirus, you will get a call and you will be asked to isolate for 14 days. Not drive across the country 260 miles to Durham just in case you need childcare, that it turns out don't need will be asked to stay at home for 14 days. And I think now members of the public, we're already starting to see some of this, will be saying, well, the, the Prime Minister's top advisor broke the rules, and we had the Prime Minister come out and defend him and say it's what any decent father would have done. Um, why should we have to stay at home for 14 days? So I completely agree with Stephen Russia that this does put lies at risk. And what it suggests is we've got a Prime Minister who is so dependent on one advisor one man, that he is putting that man's career and his advice from that man over the health of the nation. And that, to me, is a disgrace. Tom, what's your response to that? Let's take a step back here and look at the heat in, in this conversation. We have two Labour activists on this call saying that a, 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 saying that a top advisor to this government should resign over a drive. This is ridiculous, despite the fact that clearly it's not a good look despite the fact that things probably may well have been able uh, to, with hindsight, have been handled better. This is a distinction between following the letter of the rules and following the spirit of the so, rules. So, Tom, do you think then... Do you, well, in order to take the heat out of this, because clearly everybody is very upset on both sides of the debate, not just the left-hand side of this debate, to take the heat out, it would be welcomed... Uh, by everybody if Boris Johnson stood up and said, look, they got this wrong. Dominic Cummings stood up and said, we got this wrong. We shouldn't have done it, but we wanted to do... We were panicking because we wanted to look after our child. We didn't know how ill we were going to get. He has specific childcare requirements, so we had to be with our members of family up in Durham, and that's why we did it. If he could stand up and be honest and apologise, would that take the heat out of it, do you think? I'm afraid that that would be giving the media of this country far too much credit. As soon as they spot a drop of blood, they're like circling sharks and would pounce. This is a campaign to scalp a member of the government. And we're not going to see the media relenting uh, with, with anything. They're given a little bit of red meat and, and they'll jump. Ultimately, the thing is, Dominic Cummings didn't know how sick his family would get. His child has specific childcare needs. It's not like he was going out uh, for extramarital affairs. It's not like he was going out to birthday parties or to go and see or to go to, to family funerals, as we've seen with other cases, particularly as we've seen with Labour MPs. This is a clear example of safeguarding children. And ultimately, if he had the same facts and had to make that same decision again, I think he probably would have made that same decision again. And that's not something that we should be chastising him about.